Hello, my name is Matilius258, and welcome to Fractured Space. Um, this is the January update, just at the end of January. That happens just a few days ago, by the time this video should come out. Um, this is more or less the official release of the alpha version, which is a contradictory statement in itself, but yes, that is what is happening. Um, Content-wise, there hasn't been very many changes, um, so not any new ships, for example. Um, however, there have been a few new things, such as skins for ships. Um, as you can see here, with my Sentinel, I have the silver skin, which was a reward for people who got up to level 10. Um, other than that, it's mostly visuals. However, the biggest change is that there was an XP reset, which means the texture has more or less been trial run, I want to say, for the first time since the game actually started development, due to the fact that it actually takes time to get ships now. Um, as you can see here, I actually have no ships anymore. Um, only played one or two games since the update. So I only have my favorite ship, the Sentinel, and I don't have any other ship. Oh, minus the Reaper, but that's... yeah. So, it just means that it takes longer for anybody to get the ship they want, instead of just maybe one or two games, as it was before, when, every, when the most expensive XP cost for any ship was 7,200, if I recall correctly? Um... So yeah, um, however, to get to even the biggest ships, biggest ships, the most expensive ships in the game, um, so all the way from, say, Sentinel to the Raven, um, supposedly it only requires 60 games, according to the people at Edge Case, so that's quite nice. It's not too long, and it's... A decent amount for a game that still probably hasn't got everything worked out correctly. Um, other little things is that some ships now have a completely different loadout screen. As you can see here with the Leviathan, it now has two more researchable weapon options, a Tempest Light Cannon and a Tempest Heavy Cannon. Um, for the Sentinel, it now has a bunch more which I will be doing videos on eventually when I get to it, um, ignoring that. So that's about it really. After that, it's mostly visuals. Um, so yeah, that's about it really. There isn't much in the way of content changes, I want to say. Just a big change that more or less just restarts everybody to level zero instead of you know everybody in between zero and 87 all of a sudden have some have the new ship some don't have the new ship so that's no longer the change in this case so since none of that's actually happened um i might as well get into just how this will affect the game real quick because this is much like Right, at, right now, as it currently sits, um, and the amount of time that has progressed, it is currently in the same realm of every other um, of every other game that has a tech tree and a matchmaking system, and think World of Tanks, think Armored Warfare, think um, War Thunder, think. I'm really hesitant to say League of Legends, considering I've never played it, and I know next to nothing about it, so I'll put a big question mark after that. Um, so how will it affect the game? Well, it just means everybody's starting with the new starter ships. So for once in my life, I see like six Sentinels in one match playing, which used to never be the case. It used to be maybe at max two. And that was a rare occasion. Um, 
tons more Vengeners, tons more Pioneers, other ships that I have never played and have never actually had the opportunity to go up against very much. And now I'm going against them and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing because uh, nobody ever played them. So that's interesting. Um... I guess that would also be an interesting new change, which I didn't mention. The tech, tre the tech trees did change a tiny bit um, when it comes to the starting ships. So the Xerix, for example, their new starter ship is the Venture, and it used to be the Hunter. Um, the USR, it used to be the Colossus, which a long time ago used to be known as the, as the flagship. Um, it used to be the starter. And in my really, really old video of the flagship, now Colossus, um, I said it was an okay starter ship, but it definitely needs some kinks to be worked out. And the Pioneer looks like it kind of gets rid of the few of the problems the Colossus has. So, and that's just one game just trying it out, so don't quote me. Um, like, I, I didn't even mention that. The Titans, I forgot um the sentinel didn't used to be the stir ship it actually was the protector which used to be the corvette yes oh, old names protector um so that's all well and dandy um which i think is a good change it definitely reflects how the game works i guess because one of the stranger things is, before the tech tree was kind of like, sort of fleshed out is what they have now, I always thought the starter ships were kind of, starships are always meant to kind of like, say what the eventual purpose of a tech tree would be. So like for the USR, it always started with the Colossus, so it was very conventional. You shoot stuff, stuff blows up. You have armor, so you don't blow up. It was pretty simple. The Destroyer, perfect example of that. Brawler? Perfect example of that. Displacer, I know I've never played it. Disruptor, different because it actually flies around and you can be very, very versatile. Black Widow, about half. Um, and so on and so on. Um, the Xerix, they started with the Hunter. So what was the Hunter? It was a blinky, jump aroundy shippy that had the ability to fire its main guns in a rather high damage potential type gun. And it was quite nice. I liked the Hunter. Um, at one time I was pretty good with it too. I have absolutely no skill with it any whatsoever anymore. So, yeah. Um, so that was a pretty good representation because we had the Enforcer just right after it. And it was also a blinky, pretty fast ship. The Raider, a pretty blinky, fast ship. What was the common denominator? They all had crap health. Minus the hunter. Uh, Titans, what did they start with? The protector. And that's where everything got weird. So, yeah. Protector, what does it do? It heals stuff. Can you shoot stuff? No. Does it have health? No. The hell's it good for? Healing. Other things. And then all of a sudden there was the reaper, which was like, deadly. Then there was the Interceptor now, which is also quite deadly. The Leviathan, which is a capital ship designed to shoot stuff at a ridiculous rate of fire with a giant laser beam of doom. But we're all based on the Protector. Anyway, yeah, so that's an interesting change. It's just, so in other words, in like gameplay terms, it just means there's a whole bunch of, especially with the free weekend that happened, there's a lot of new players playing with the new starter ships that nobody actually knows how to really play correctly. Except for the few people, and half of me, because I use the Sentinel a lot, but now I apparently have no idea how to use it anymore, because I've been fighting ships I've never fought before. Um, so yeah, um, what it does mean is that people who have gotten the ships that they were really, really good with, that are really, really far down the tech tree, are going to be really, really dangerous. Um, for example, the Paragon. Nobody knows how to play the Paragon. But if you do know how to play the Paragon, you become one of the most deadly people on the map. As I have unfortunately had the encounter with one of the very, very powerful Paragon flyers out there. 
which was a surprise. I'm rambling now. So I'm just going to end the video. Um, uh -oh, wrong button. So that was the January update at the very, very, very end of January for Fractured Space. Um, the full patch notes should be in the description, should be, will be, in the description. Um, please read at your leisure. There's a bunch of new changes. Some ships have completely been changed, basically. Um, so I hope to shoot you soon. See you next time, and thank you for watching.